Next, we call upon uh, Dr. Anish Kumar, post transplant FSGS, a single center experience. Good morning, uh, uh, respected teachers, uh, dear colleagues. Myself, Dr. Anish Kumar from VPS Lakeshore, Ernagulam. Uh, my study is post renal transplant focal segment of glomerulosclerosis, a single standard study. Post transplant focal segment of glomerulosclerosis may be a recurrent or de novo. Distinguishing between idiopathic and secondary FSGS is especially important because idiopathic forms frequently occur in the graft with subsequent rate of graft loss. The treatment in recurrent focal segment glomerulosclerosis is crucial, even though no consensus for treating it. Through this study, I would like to aim to know the prevalence of the focal segment glomerulosclerosis after transplantation and to know the severity of post-transplant focal segment glomerulosclerosis in terms of graft dysfunction and proteinuria and to analyze various management strategies used and study outcomes in form of grass dysfunction and proteinuria after six months. Nearly 1,100 renal transplantation has been done between the period of 2015 to 2022. Out of these, 25 post-transplant FSGs were reported. Retrospective analysis of various features, management strategies, and prognosis have been analyzed. Comes to the result. Out of 25 patients, 18 were females and 12 were males. Based upon the natty kidney distribution in my study, out of 25 patients, 11 patients had a focal segment glomerulosclerosis and 6 each with a diabetic kidney disease and 6 have unknown etiology and 1 each with IG nephropathy and Alport syndrome. I also analyzed the end stage renal disease progression of each natty kidney disease prior to transplantation. I would like I noticed that the Patients with the focal segment glomerulosclerosis have relatively rapid progression. Uh, they had a uh, nearly 26 months of uh, reaching the end stage renal disease after detection. Induction agent, out of 25 patients, 17 got induction with the uh, uh, ATG and 7 got induction with the basiliximab, 1 got induction with the graflon. And all are maintained with the uh, normal tracrolimus, MMF and restaurant uh, regime. And the mean age at the time of transplantation in various groups are both FSGS and IG nephropathy had a nearly same age, around 35 years of age. And both uh, diabetic kidney disease and Alport had a nearly same age at the time of transplantation, around 50 years. Those with unknown etiology had a mean time around 32 years at the time of transplantation. Then about the various clinical presentation, out of 25, 18 patients had a graft dysfunction plus proteinuria, 12 had a proteinuria itself. Among this proteinuria group, 60 percentage had a, a subnephrotic proteinuria and 40 percentage had nephrotic range proteinuria. Based on the Cameroon classification, we divide the patients into various time of presentation that is like less than three months, three months to one year and more than one year. Of these, uh, four patients from the FSGS group belongs to less than three months, and uh, nearly 11, 12 patients from other groups had a, a detection after one year. Early recurrence in FSGS had uh, nearly four patients. Uh, two of them in, uh, in the childhood age, age group, and one patient had a, among this one patient had a FSGS, which with a genetic predisposition, found to have NPHS1 positive. And uh, among this, one patient is a renal transplant, a renal retransplant recipient. Presenting features of natty kidney disease may be classified in terms of proteinuria and graft dysfunction plus proteinuria. FSGS had a proteinuria, uh, six patients, graft dysfunction plus proteinuria among three, five patients. Diabetic nephropathy patients each had uh, three patients each with a proteinuria and graft dysfunction. And IJ nephropathy patients, one had a graft dysfunction with the proteinuria. Alport syndrome presented with the proteinuria itself. And among the unknown etiology, two presented with the proteinuria and four presented with the graft dysfunction plus proteinuria. In the proteinuria during biopsy, 
Out of 11 patients in FSGS group 6 had nephrotic range proteinuria, 5 had a subnephrotic range proteinuria. Among the subnephrotic range, uh, uh, both the diabetic kidney disease and IG nephropathy had a subnephrotic range presentation. Alport had a nephrotic range of presentation. Those with unknown etiology, 3 had nephrotic and 3 had subnephrotic range proteinuria. Various treatment modalities we attributed are plasmapheresis itself or plasmapheresis plus rituximab, plasmapheresis plus rituximab plus abetacept, plasmapheresis plus abetacept. And those with uh, probably secondary FSGA suspected treated with the ARB only and some of them treated with the rituximab alone. Those two had a graft failure treated with the uh, hemodialysis. This is uh, ba based on various response with the various treatment strategies. Plasmapheresis alone got the three got complete remission. Plasmapheresis plus rituximab got uh, out of to four, two got remission and two got partial remission. And uh, with the combination of plasmapheresis plus rituximab plus abetacept, one got partial remission. Plasmapheresis abetacept, one got uh, partial remission. Uh, with the ARB alone with the other uh, immunosuppressive agents, uh, out of 11 patients, four got remission and four got partial remission. The tuximab alone group, we had uh, one partial remission and two got complete remission. Those underwent graft failure initiated with hemodialysis. Out of, in general uh, outcome, out of 25 patients and 11 got complete remission and uh, 12 got partial remission, two got, got graft failure. Based upon the nephrotic range proteinuria distribution, out of the uh, 11 patients, three got complete remission, four got partial remission, and two got graft failure. Based on the support subnephrotic range proteinuria group, seven got remission and uh, eight got partial remission. So my conclusion, relatively rapid progression to end-stage renal disease in patients having FSGS as an kidney disease. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis occurs relatively early, especially in children. Post-transplant FSGS can present with a proteinuria with or without graft failure. Proteinuria has prognostic implications, outcomes relatively good for subnephrotic proteinuria. Second transplant after loss from recurrence had increased the risk of graft dysfunction. In this study, de novo focal segmental glomerulosclerosis often associated with the nephrotic range proteinuria usually occurs 12 months after transplantation. Early detection of proteinuria and initiation of treatment may help in prevention of disease progression. Thank you. Uh, that was a good one. Only thing is, what is the indication for graft biopsy as a policy in your uh, unit? <coughs> Madam, uh, patients with the proteinuria more than one gram and with the graft dysfunction in the immediate after follow-up period, in the immediate after transplantation, we used to do biopsy, madam. No, uh, if it is proteinuria alone, also you are doing biopsy, isn't it? Madam, in some patients have already having FSGS as the native kidney disease, we will used to do even proteinuria itself more than one gram, we will do. In other suspected cases, if both are together, we will do, madam. Your protocol is what? Like it is a decision of the treating physician or do you have protocol biopsies or you choose whenever you have a high risk patient so you'll do a biopsy. Like what is your protocol as a transplant unit? Basically high risk patients, madam, in, especially in cases of FSGS. Whenever there is an unknown etiology, we will consider the clinical parameters and lab parameters like uh, severe proteinuria and graft dysfunction. Have you done electron microscopy on these patients? Yes, madam. We have done in some doubtful cases, we have done. Out of these patients, how many had electron microscopy? Madam, only four only we did electron microscopy. What was the diagnosis according to electron microscopy? Madam, both, all of them had a suggestive of secondary FSGS, madam. None of them had a... Um, not more than 80 percentage effacement. Most of them were in the group of 40 to 60 percentage effacement of food process. What was the indication for uh, abetacept as such? When did you choose to give? In what all patients you gave? Actually, madam, <coughs> we are given in two to three patients uh, total three patients with abatacept 
and uh, our principle was uh, the age group between 20 to 30 years of age group we tried abatacetamide. Is there any benefit in adding the drug? Madam, I could uh, both uh, with the treating with the rituximab and abatacept, we got partial remission only. In, uh, follow up any risk of infection in them because you have hit them hard. Actually, madam, some of them, I, uh, among the three patients, one got CMV infection in the later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.